Here in this video, we will talk about the real-life Megalodon shark and its rivals in the ancient seas. These gigantic sharks were noted as apex predators, but the oceans of the world are expansive and there are other apex species as well, some of which rival in size, while others having numbers or even intelligence to their advantage. It's not just a guess or a probability, but a definite inference that the giant sharks were in constant battles against these other species. So we will dive into the deep and discuss firstly the growth and life cycle of the megs along with habitat and prey and then go on to the comparison between it and the rival species and which one might have caused the extinction of the megalodon. We will also tell you how they might have either hunted or killed each other in the past. So let's get to it. So the megalodon sharks were an extinct mackerel shark species that live around 23 to 3.6 million years ago. Estimates of its size reach between 15 to 20.3 meters or 50 to 67 feet in length and weighing around 50 to 100 metric tons. It wasn't the biggest sea creature or marine predator of all time, but it is up there in the top 5. The megs likely gave birth to live pups preferring warm coastal areas as nurseries. Infant megalodons were about 3.5 meters or 11 feet long, which grew at a slow and gradual pace and therefore also faced predation from other predatory sea creatures. Fossils of megalodons have been found globally in various environments, with a broad temperature tolerance due to mesothermy. They live in shallow and deep waters, transitioning between coastal and oceanic habitats at different life stages. As for food items or prey, anything is good as long as it isn't poisonous. So let's go to the timeline and what are the competing predators that existed around the same time as these monstrous sharks. So these megs lived around 23 to 3.6 million years ago from the Miocene to the Pliocene epochs. So that in itself shows a highly successful species lifespan and also there must have been quite a few rivals over that long period of time. The ones that we do know are three of them, mainly predatory whales. The first is the Leviathan Melville, which existed around 10 to 8.9 million years ago, just over a million years sharing the seas with the Megalodon. The second one is the sperm whale. Although fossil records are poor, there is still a tentative conclusion that these true sperm whales emerged around 5 million years ago and therefore would have shared the seas with the megs for about 2 million years. The third rival is the killer whale. This one right here is known as the wolf of the sea. It evolved into being around the same time as the sperm whale. It might be the smallest here, but it definitely was and still is the deadliest of all the three. Anyway, let's compare their sizes first and then go on into their interactions with the megs. So the estimations of the megalodon shark varied widely because they were initially thought to have been predecessors of the great white shark, but it is now suggested that they are in fact mackerel sharks. The megs are thought to have been anywhere between 15 to 20 meters or between 50 to 66 feet long and weighing 50 to 100 tons. The Leviathan Melville was also a beast. It was thought to have been of a similar size, between 13.5 to 17.5 meters or 44 to 57 feet in length and weighing around 50 to 60 tons. The sperm whale is on average around 16 meters or 52 feet long, but large males have been documented to surpass even 20 meters or 66 feet, longer than a meg, and the record size is 24 meters or almost 80 feet long, and that right there is a behemoth of the seas, with a weight easily more than 100 tons. So going to the third one, the killer whales are the smallest here with a record size of 9.8 meters or just 32 feet long, and weighing around 10 tons. So starting, let's go with the interactions between the Megalodon and the Leviathan Melville. These were ancient behemoths, they differed in size slightly, uh, they differed in movement, senses and behavior as well. The Leviathan moved around 5 to 20 miles per hour using tail motion, while the Megalodon swam slower at 11 miles per hour with body and tail movements, with short bursts of speed that could reach around 20 miles an hour. Leviathan's taste and smell were limited but had sonar, or echolocation while the Meg excelled in vision and smell. Both relied on size and speed for defense against one another. The Leviathan's teeth and bite adapted to ambush other prey items, while the Megalodon's colossal jaws possessed a powerful bite force that could attack anything directly. These ancient titans navigated prehistoric oceans with unique attributes and strategies. So in a fight, the Leviathan, one-on-one -on -one with a similar-sized Meg, would lose most direct battles. But since it is an ambush predator and can dive deeper and use sonar to detect threats, it could surprise attack a shark and take the win. 
The Megalodon, which is still a shark and had to constantly move in order to breathe, is at a disadvantage compared to the Leviathan, who could dive 500 meters down and lay in a still position for a long period of time waiting for the opportune moment. So the battles between these two species could have gone either way, depending on different situations and circumstances. Next, the interactions between a sperm whale and a megalodon. So to start off, sperm whales are swifter than megalodons in short bursts. Yet the megalodon constant speed could match the sperm whale over long distances. However, the sperm whale could dive into deeper depths, which would be a death zone for the meg. The whale's defenses include a larger size, blubber protection, and living in a pod of several large individuals. The megalodon's safety relied on its size and heightened senses, akin to a great white shark's abilities, detecting electrical charges, chemicals, and motion. The meg boasted a powerful bite force as well, and a very large jaw, while sperm whales wielded massive heads for ramming, strong tails for slapping, and disorienting clicks. Sperm whales also flaunt some of the world's largest teeth, measuring 8 inches long, that could do great harm especially to smaller mech specimens. But the sperm whales have evolved in a different direction. They have evolved to hunt smaller creatures like a variety of fish species, even other smaller sharks, and giant squids and therefore would not go head to head against a larger megalodon individual. It would rather just dive and hide until the shark goes away. The win in the short run goes to the meg in an encounter, but the fact that the sperm whales still exist today is evident of their most successful survival strategies. Now lastly, their interactions with the killer whales. Alright, starting with the size disadvantage, with a stomach capacity of nearly 10,000 liters, findings indicate that the meg, with its huge jaw, had the ability to consume prey up to 8 meters long in one go. This implies that the killer whale could have potentially been devoured whole by this shark. But that's the thing, killer whales are too smart to be captured unawares except during mating times, and they travel in pods of 15 to 50 individuals, each with the same sonar abilities and intellect, able to move as a pack and coordinate attacks efficiently. They are also twice faster than a meg, so they can either outpace it or even outmaneuver it in a fight. One on one, there is no competition but unlike the movie The Mech 2, the mechs do not hunt in packs. They were solo predators and therefore, the numbers are on the side of the orcas. When killer whales confront mechs, they would employ a strategic approach. Their cunning and coordination would prove the vital factor. So while one orca distracts the shark, another one inflicts small bites. Initially, these nibbles might not harm the shark yet the cumulative effect over hours will wear it down and bleed it out, especially biting off the mech's tail piece by piece till it is immobilized. Though a megalodon bite could easily eliminate an orca if there was a minor mistake, their coordinated efforts ensure a constant attack and the replacement of tired individuals. Through a patient and calculated campaign, the intelligent orcas will emerge victorious, as seen in their tactics against larger prey items like the blue and sperm whales today in the present times. Yet yeah, creatures way larger than the meg are prey items to these wolves of the sea, and they on occasion even hunt and eat great white sharks too, meaning smaller megs are a dinner delight. Since their habitats coincide everywhere, this means that there is a high probability that the killer whales actually wiped out the megs from the planet, either through bells, which might happen more often than not, killing off the smaller meg specimens, the juveniles, or more likely by competing for the same prey items, the larger slower whales. Thus the killer whales might have starved off the mech from its food items and effectively wiping them out of the planet. So isn't that surprising? The killer whales, the smallest ones, made the biggest ones extinct. Anyway, I hope you have enjoyed watching this video. Do hit that like button for support and subscribe, but most of all, smash that bell icon for regular updates and new videos right here on this channel. Till the next one. Take care, fam.